Hey there guys, hope you're all doing well. This is Jason here from Double Cube and welcome back to a brand new video. This is gonna be very different. This is not gonna be a tutorial, but it's gonna be a video where I'm gonna be showing you guys a cool tool by Vecteasy.com and they reached out to me a couple of months ago and then they said they have their new tool, online tool, where you can use to create illustrations or vector graphics and uh, it's gonna be really good because I checked out their software and uh, pretty cool things that we can do with it. So this tool is gonna be very useful for those who don't have Illustrator or any vector software. If you guys are trying to create very simple and easy illustrations, then you guys can definitely check out this tool. So without further ado, let's get started. So here I am on Vecteasy.com and Vecteasy is actually a website where you can download free vector art. So once you download it, it gives you the option to edit it as an Illustrator file or an EPS file. So whichever is convenient to you and you can put it up in your respective illustration software and then start editing it. So uh, here are a couple of free vector arts uh, which you can download for free. Um, but I think you got to make an account first. So you can either use Facebook or use uh, or create an account with your email ID and password and it should work out for you. And here are the premium vectors. So Vecteasy was very kind enough to give me to give me a couple of credits to download any of the free vectors. And uh, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to edit one of these and also how to create your things on your own. So it's gonna be you know two parts. So as you can see here, uh, it says uh, the vector editor is finally done and we can now edit files before even downloading them and it's very customizable and all of the stuff and yeah that's pretty much about our website um, so let's jump in actually now one thing you want to remember is if you want to if you want to use this you can either use it on chrome chromium or opera it does not allow on microsoft edge firefox or any other browser so let's go and just click on start designing and that's going to open up this for us now every time you open a different illustration uh, gets opened up here it's basically like uh, your own original software if you're using photoshop or illustrator or any other software it's pretty much the same but uh, very the the features are very less compared to that because it's an online stage and they're trying to build more and more so what i'm going to do for now is i'm going to just select all this and i'm going to hit delete because we want to do something from scratch okay so the first one is the selection tool but i there's nothing to select uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the background option and I can set my background to whatever I want. So let's try and set this to 1000 by 1000. Okay, there we go. It's going to set up our background for us. And also I can just move around and click and move to center my artboard. Make sure you hold down spacebar when doing that. Okay, and here is the fill setting. So let's go and select, uh, let's say a like like a dark red color right and i can move this to make it a dark red color so something like that and i just click the intermark and uh, so as you can see here we have the three different types we have solid we have linear and i can control the linear gradient all right so i'm going to just press ctrl z to snap that it's a good thing that you guys have shortcuts also uh, the next one is radial, which is, you know, radial. So, you know, if I go ahead, I get this nice vignette and things like that. I'm going to stick with solid for now. And the color transparency is the opacity of the background. So make sure you have, you select your object and then move, move out that. So, uh, and unfortunately, I think you can create only one background. So if you want to create more shapes, then you'll have to go into the shape tool. So here in the select tool, if I click on anything, I can't click on anything because we just created a background and it is completely locked. So let's go and start with the text. Okay, let's see what we get. So we can actually click and drag either one of these to create our own text, or I can click the medium text, or I can click on the small text, and it's gonna make it very easy rather than clicking and then typing whatever I want. So these are like pre-ready-made set of text layers. Okay, so I'm gonna select, delete these two for now, and I'm gonna use the large text. So obviously I can change the color, so let's change it to a nice uh, blue color, right? um or a olive shape color okay and i can also go and grab the colors from anywhere i want within the document so if i have so i can import pictures as well so if i go to file and import photo i can just click and copy that color data and also write down the hex code which is pretty handy so basic stuff are there so again the fill settings we have the linear and the radial and i change my colors over here 
and uh, okay then we have the fill the, to change the opacity there we go opacity uh, stroke settings so stroke if I add in a green stroke or a red stroke or a blue stroke um, I can just see where to put the stroke so above and below so so let's zoom in pretty close so I'm just I'm gonna hold down control and roll my mouse wheel and uh, I can zoom in and as you can see it doesn't pixelate because obviously these are vector graphics and they're not supposed to pixelate so when I click on above it's gonna come inside and if I click on below it's gonna go outside and the stroke size I can change that so something like that looking good and the stroke uh, transparency which is basically the opacity now what I would suggest back easy to do is also create shortcuts so that it becomes easy so fitting to screen so usually in illustrator control zero works to fit the document to the screen um, I'm not quite sure what the shortcut is over here okay now one thing I notice is when I go and try to okay so now once the text is done what I try to do is I try to align it to the center of the document but unfortunately it doesn't allow me to do that and pretty not sure quite so why the reason is maybe they're still trying to develop it but it allows me to flip uh, which is not exactly what I want so we can go ahead and turn on rulers and uh, that kind of gives us a basic idea of where we can place our text so I think I'm guessing 500 is the center point over here because it's a thousand document and I'm just gonna move this uh, right over here and I can so, over here and uh, I can you know hold down shift and move left to make sure it moves on a horizontal path or I can select it and move up and down to make sure it works on a vertical path so now we can go ahead and double click on this and we can now change the text so I'm just gonna call this wet uh, easy okay and uh, so we can change the font so let's go and choose a different font the good thing is it uh, if I'm not wrong I think it takes the data from your actual uh, fonts folder in your desktop uh, which I don't know how it is actually doing that but it's pretty cool or maybe I think I already I don't have all these fonts I'm not sure what the case is over here but um, I'm pretty sure I have all these fonts anyway so I'm gonna click on able and uh, that's gonna give this a nice cool looking thing and um, like I said, so so the typeface is able and the font is normal now obviously the color again I can change it so I don't want to do anything now then the size transparent and the letter spacing now the letter spacing is basically the kerning so I can increase it or decrease it to make it small and uh, let's see if we change the number do we get a bigger one so let's try 50 yep there we go it does work and uh, the size is again something which we can increase or decrease and uh, I can just click on any of the points hold down shift to scale it you know from the center or I can just you know not hold down shift and it automatically scales if I hold down control then I can scale it in any proportion I want which is kind of kind of different than the tools uh, and shortcuts in Photoshop or Illustrator okay then we have the line curve so line curve is something very important so if I go to the type tool and uh, come over here so the line curve it basically it's like the warp tool so I can you know warp it up and warp it down let's bring this thing down let's select it and bring this down okay and uh, the line curve there we go oh I, and that uh, this cool thing comes which I can control the direction which is very interesting I think I don't think this is there in Illustrator uh, let's say I can turn this around okay shrink it uh, it's pretty wacky uh, but anyways uh, that's what we want so I'm just gonna press ctrl Z till I get my basic one over here uh, so the next thing is we let's go delete the text now let's go thing we have the pen tool so the pen tool is basically to drop shapes I can just click and then click to create random shapes okay and then I can individually go and edit these anchor points which are very useful to get the perfect shape that you're trying to go for which is nice and uh, let me just delete that and another thing is we can also click and hold down and to get curvature so to get curved smooth stuff all right and uh, there we go okay now suppose I want to add more points to this what I can do is I can just click and that's gonna highlight this blue into you know it's gonna highlight the circle into blue it means it's gonna it's selected the anchor point and I can click once more to make it red and now we can continue to add points so I can just click on this and uh, click here and there we go we have the same shape with more number of anchor points I'm just gonna go now and get rid of those rulers because they're kind of annoying me 
All right. Anyways, um, so and then the same thing. We can change the color. We can change the stroke. Basic settings, not too complicated, and the stroke size as well. Okay. So the next thing is elements. So elements are predetermined shapes which you can use. Um, so if I go and click on the shapes, I can get the circle. So I just need to click, and it's going to automatically throw in. And then I can go and then scale it down how much ever I want. Maybe I want a square inside. Uh, let's put in a square and uh, we can just go to the selection tool and then change the color of this to red, green, whatever it is. Um, that's right. Um, we also have illustrations which are ready made illustrations. So we have hearts, we have sh we have crowns, we have arrow marks, whatever it is. And these are completely editable. So we can go click and if I double click, I can select each element then I can edit the gradient if I want to select the arrow mark I can just click on it but uh, sometimes it's gonna be a little difficult to actually move these around because I don't know selection is a little bit of a problem here uh, you may you might have to double click or triple click sometimes now for example if I select the shadow I can just click on it if I want to select this I can select it back again and yeah there we go and when I come to templates uh, so it says this feature is coming soon so we kind of have to wait out for that and you can also just search for anything you want so for example I want a uh, moon and I can click on all and that's gonna give me a moon and with a lot of moons wow these are a lot of moons so basically I think not it not only limits it to this but it gives us a lot of things so if I just get rid of moon and just search for illustrations I don't see a bunch of things so if I, I can type in whatever I want and I can get it so it's very useful which I actually didn't know about that anyways let's go and delete all of this we don't want any of this okay so that's pretty much on uh, getting the on creating your design here so let me just create this pie chart for now so I'll show you guys how to export it uh, but before you do that let's go to the file so you can import SVG files or a uh, photo files in case you want to use that in an illustration or you want to go ahead and edit that and uh, E is for exit, clear is for zero. So if I click on clear, it's going to clear out everything. I'm just going to press Ctrl Z to get everything back. And uh, we can now download this as an SVG or a PNG. So the PNG, this will not work as a PNG because it has a background and I need the transparent background. So if I click on download SVG, it's going to go and as you can see, it's going to download the SVG. And if I click, it's going to open up in my new browser with the SVG over here, which is awesome. All right, that's great. So next we have this file where we can select a couple of objects and group them. So as you can see, these are groups. So I can click on ungroup and uh, they'll split each other into individual elements. Okay, there we go. And I can select these two and go to file and group. And now I can move these two separately. So the next is the undo, redo and duplicate. So duplicate, it just duplicates the layer. Let's see if there's a shortcut. Uh, control C, control V, yeah. So now if I select both of these objects, I can come over here and I can arrange them to the middle, left, right, horizontal, whatever the options are. Uh, so I think it doesn't show the anchor point. So if it did show the anchor point, that would have been very cool and very easy for everybody as well. Okay, another thing is we have the help center over here and a help center over here. So I can just type in my name, my email address. I can, you know, type in whatever the questions I have and even attachments. And uh, I'm pretty sure they're gonna reply very fast because they're pretty responsive to my emails and uh, also is an option called help so it's gonna open up a new tab where we have a different lots of questions over here and you can search for any kind of question or even submit a request and it's gonna have a ready-made answer for you okay and the last thing is we can click on download and I can choose the type I can choose a PNG or a JPG or an SVG and I can click on the terms and conditions and click on download and that's gonna download for me again I'm just going to close this up. So that's pretty much it on VecTZ online editor. Now what I'm going to do is before I log off, I'm going to run a speed art where I'm going to just be just showing you guys how I edit one of their premium templates. I'm not going to go ahead into complete detail because I actually showed you everything uh, in the video itself. So hope you guys enjoy that and I'll uh, see you guys in my next video. So till then, take care and bye bye. Oh, 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 oh,